Hi there. Um, just one quick note before I get into my two questions that I have. Uh, I will, as a gay male, I want to say thank you for speaking the truth on the whole pronoun thing, because that drives me absolutely ballistic in today's society. Um, now, two quick questions. I want to get your view on the social construct of a safe space that universities like my home here in New Ottawa have tried to push on us. Yeah. And as well, I want to understand um, what your view on this whole white privilege thing is that universities like you, Ottawa, you, T. Yeah. Yeah, I think the idea of white privilege is absolutely reprehensible. And it's not because white people aren't privileged. <laughs> I, you know, we have all sorts of privileges, and most people have privileges of all sorts, and you should be grateful for your privileges and work to deserve them, I would say. But the, the idea that you can target an ethnic group with a collective crime, Regardless of the specific innocence or guilt of the constituent elements of that group There is absolutely nothing that's more racist than that. It's absolutely abhorrent. I can't yeah. I mean that that if you if you really want to know more about that sort of thing you should read about the kulaks in the in the Soviet Union in the 1920s K-U-L-A-K-S because they were they were farmers who were very productive. They were the most productive element of the agricultural strata in, in Russia. And they were virtually all killed or raped and robbed by the collectivists who insisted that because they showed signs of wealth, they were criminals and, 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 and robbers. So, and the, one of the consequences of the prosecution of the Kulaks was the death of six million Ukrainians from a famine in the 1930s. The idea of collectively held guilt at the level of the individual as a legal or philosophical principle is dangerous. It's precisely the sort of danger that people who are really looking for trouble would push. So, and, and just a cursory glance at 20th century history should teach anyone who wants to know exactly how how unacceptable that is. With regards to your first, okay, there's the safe space issue, but you also said something right at the beginning. You, you, you announced your sexual preference at the beginning, and I understand exactly why you did that, but I, I have a comment about that. And this is something for people in the audience to think about. I've received at least 25 letters from um, transsexual people, and that's quite a few, because there aren't that many transsexual people, right? So, so they're rare, they're, they're very rare, and every single one of them but one was supportive. And the one that wasn't supportive was mildly critical, and they said exactly the same thing that, that you said, rough, roughly speaking, is that, and so what we, one of the things we want to remember is that just because some, some noisy activists stand up and say, because I'm a member of this group, or even worse, because I say I'm a member of this group, I am therefore an advocate for that group's interests, is we should just dispense with that, um, with that self-identification as a worthy representative instantaneously, because it's predicated on the idea that one dimension of a person's identity is sufficiently, uh, what would you say, broad and all-encompassing, so that you can infer their political stance, for example, which you can't. And so the, the trans people that have written me, they all say the same thing. A, those people do not speak for me. B, we're not all the same. C, most of us think that the enforced pronoun issue is doing nothing but drawing negative attention to us. D. Most of us just want to be referred to by the other pronoun. That's the whole point. <laughs> so... You know, so this has been very, very uh, reassuring to me, because one of the things I presumed right from the onset was that there was no evidence whatsoever that this nonsensical leg legislation and the postmodern idiocy behind it is in fact demanded by this community or that it will in any way be in anyone's best interest. No, I don't buy it. And I think it's rotten right to the core. So, and then the safe, safe space issue. It's like if you need a safe space, see a therapist. <laughs> really, really, university, university is not a safe space. If university is done right, it is a radically unsafe space. If you want to go somewhere and get yourself taken apart intellectually, and then hopefully put back together, then you go to university. Everything you believe should be challenged in every possible way, but not in a destructive sense, right? 
Like when you're renovating a house, you don't just burn it to the ground and walk away. But that's what the postmodernists do to adolescents, by the way. You dismantle it in consultation with its occupant, attempting to build something more beautiful and functional on the, on the foundation. It's not a safe space, you know, in, in my classes, and I tell my students this right at the beginning. I'm trying to get them to understand why they are Nazis. Right, there isn't anything more unsafe than that. And all of them, virtually all of them, write back to me afterwards and say, uh, th this was the most worthwhile class I've ever had in my life, and it changed my life. It's like, well, I'm teaching you the worst possible thing about yourself. And your response is, oh, that was so useful, and I'm way better than I was. You know, it's, it's, but it's in keeping with the idea that you need to be exposed to things that you fear and hate, because that's where salvation lies, roughly speaking.